Hello, everybody. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Welcome, welcome, everyone. Welcome, welcome. If you can hear me, let me know. And we will be on with the show. Can you hear me, guys? Let me know. Put it in the comments. We are live. We are live. We are good to go. All right? Put it in the comments if you can hear the sound of my voice. Yes, Pyramid can. Everyone can. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So good to have you on this training. Close, I love windows. Welcome, Sam Dilley, Augustine Wodo, Success King, Elijah, Martin, JC Okoha, Lizzie Peth, D Edit, New Era TV, Success King, Soji Afotan, Olumide Bangbose, uh, Eunice Wanga, Emefon Isip. Good to see you guys. We are about to go live, and today we are going to quickly run you through this workshop titled Multiply Your Business Revenue with AI. Ladies and gentlemen, I can guarantee you that what you're about to learn is something that you probably have never come across before, right? This is something that, uh, something that has never been taught before, something that you are going to be one of the first to learn, not just in the Nigerian or African space, but worldwide. As you know, it is our job here at Creator Lab to keep you abreast, keep you ahead of the game regarding anything in the creator economy, especially with AI. And we're going to be showing you this mad new update and how you can multiply your business revenue with AI. All right, now I'm going to show my face in a bit. Give me a sec. I'm going to show my face in a bit, give you an introduction, and then I'm going to bring on Olakunli to run us through the first part of this, and then we'll have the second part. Okay, let's go. Hello, everybody. How are you doing? So good to have you back on here. This is Creator Lab. And like I said, we're going to talk about how to multiply your business using AI. Now, as you can see, my eyes are up and down because I'm going to be actually demonstrating some things as well. I'll be looking at, at the camera to you guys, but I'll also be looking down on my computer so that I can share my screen and show you guys how this works. Now, if you got the email that I sent you guys in preparation for this training, I explained the entire system. But just in case you may not have uh, just in case you may not have read the email or, or you didn't watch the video on the on the page that explained the system, give me a, like five minutes to explain what the system is, okay? So what does it mean to multiply your business revenue with AI? Um, it's not clickbait. It's not over-sensationalizing the topic. What it simply means is this. We are taking a strategy that has been around forever but has not been within the reach of small businesses until recently. Now, what is this strategy? I'm sure some of you may have studied mathematics in school. We have something that they call regressional or regressive analysis. And that is the practice of using past data to predict future behavior. And so those of you who are into Forex or you're into uh, stocks, right? You typically use past behavior to predict future behavior. You want to see what the past trends have been so you can know what may happen in the future, all right? And so in the business world, this is used all the time, all right? But only the top, co the, only, only the top businesses, the top corporations have had access to complex software, very expensive software with which to take previous customer data, run it through the software, and the software can intelligently tell you what the buying trend has been like. And it can also help you inform future um, 
marketing decisions. So the first step of this system is data, all right? The first step of this system is data, getting your customer data. When you have your customer data, you can run it through these software. Now, these software are generally expensive software that are normally out of the reach of the everyday person. But recently, we had this chat GPT craze. And chat GPT can do a lot more than people know. One of the latest updates of chat GPT is something called code interpreter. That code interpret interpreter is going to take the jobs of data analysts and complex and expensive data analysis software. Now with your chat GPT, you can take your customer data, run it through ChatGPT, and ChatGPT will do the job of all those expensive software. It will tell you specifically who your best performing customers are, what your best products are, am amongst other questions, and then tell you what you can do for further marketing campaigns, all right? So we'll get to that part, but the first part is data. Do you have a reliable way of keeping data? Do you have a reliable way of recording all your transactions? Most small businesses do not record their transactions, and that's terrible. So, so whether you are recording your transactions using, a, uh, using an online payment processor like Flutterwave or Paystack or Stripe or even Stellar, whether you're, you're recording, you're getting your money from those payment processors or people are doing bank transfers, and you are just confirming them manually. You should be able to enter all those records into a software that can reliably keep your data. When you have all that data, that data is going to be powerful. As you, as you guys know, we are no longer in the information economy, we are in the data economy. And data is what makes companies like Facebook, um, Twitter, uh, Google, is what makes them super valuable, the data they have on their customers. They can run this data through algorithms and then predict our behavior and sell us even more products. Even Apple is in the business of data. So why should you, as a small business, not be in the business of data? People buy from you every day. People make customer inquiries every day. And that data is money if you know what to do with it. So the two parts of this session is Olakunle Ajila is going to come on here. He is the founder of a fantastic software, Simple Books. Uh, some of you have gotten access to Simple Books already. Some of you have not, but don't worry. They are onboarding everyone in batches and everyone is going to get access to Simple Books, okay? So some of you may have gotten it. Maybe you played around with it a little bit, but don't worry. Olakun is going to come on now and show us exactly what Simple Books is, how you can use this to enter in all your customer data, whether it's data that you recorded through online transactions or payments to your bank account. He'll show you how to record all that data and then I'll take from him and show you what you can do with that data with AI, okay? Is that understood? Is everybody ready? All right, so some people say my screen is blurred. If you think that, is the, that the screen is blurred, make sure you go to your YouTube settings. Uh, there's some way on YouTube settings, change the quality, the quality of uh, your YouTube settings, okay? And it's going to be, um, is going to be a lot better on your end. All right, so without further ado, I'm going to hand over to Olakunle Ajila as he runs us through his demonstration of simple books. Olakunle, uh, you are coming up now. Good to have you on, man. Hi, John. So excited to be here. Good evening. How are we awesome. doing today? Good evening, Good evening everyone. Uh, can I confirm that everyone can hear me before I start? Hi, can you all hear me clearly? Okay, I'm checking the chat. I'm not seeing anything yet. Can you see the comments on your end? Because the, the private chat is different from the comments. Yeah, I, I'm also looking at it on uh, the YouTube. On YouTube. Okay, cool, cool, cool. cool. Yes, on another screen, yes. Oh, All right, guys, so can you confirm that you can see and hear Ola Kunle? Okay. Okay, you can. Another thing, guys, can you also confirm that you can see and hear me well? Because I saw some people saying that they couldn't, uh, my video was blurred, all right? Is, is Ola Kunle showing well? Am I showing well? Or am I blurred and Ola Kunle is showing okay? Let me know, all right? What, okay, it's, it's, Mr. Akule's screen is not blurred. It's my own that is blurred. 
Is, it, is my own still blurred? Can you see me now? Can you see me and Olakunle well? We are both okay? Fantastic. All right, Olakunle, over to you. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much, John. And I'm really excited to be here to speak with everyone. Uh, the topic, I think, is even something I myself uh, would learn a lot of from. So uh, this is something that would benefit to all of us. Good evening. Um, like John mentioned, I will just be talking you through uh, Red Card Kidpin as well as um, how to get the data. Um, in Nigeria, we've all agreed that the major challenge we have in Nigeria is data. Not too long ago, I think last week, there were even um, some trend on Twitter arguing about the Nigerian population. And after reading those that were saying, oh, we are truly 200 million, Lagos is 20 million, and those that said, maybe we are not. There was no basis to prove or disprove uh, whoever is right amongst both parties. And that is because the, the, the tangible data is not available, all right? As a business, as um, an entrepreneur, as a creative, Hello, can you hear me? I was pushed out a bit while I was just now. Okay, can everyone hear me now? I think John is still not back. Okay, great. All right. Hi, John. I lost you for yeah. a bit there. Are you back with us now? Yes, I am. I, I am. Please proceed. Okay. All right. Great. So um, let me share my slides. Let me just share my screen again. I think you still need to control it from your end. Yes. So once you share it, I'll be able to put it up. Okay. All right. Okay, so I'm back sharing now. All right, sorry about that uh, That break. So the point I was making is that data is very, very critical um, for any, any for any basis of um, conversation. So when you say you want to grow or you want to multiply your revenue, if you don't have previous data, if you don't know where you are currently, uh, your ability to actually grow is very, very limited. And if indeed you're growing because you don't have data, you're also un unable to quantify that growth. Um, at Simple Books, we provide accounting and business solution for small businesses. And the basis of where we started is understanding that about 90% of businesses in Nigeria are unable to access finance. And what you see a lot of players do is come in and say, oh, I'm setting up an organization that will provide lending. Uh, you have banks saying, oh, we want to finance businesses. Uh, but for over eight years experience working in the banking industry, I came to realize that because businesses do not keep data, it becomes very difficult for those financiers to give the businesses the money that they require. So as much as I love Eunice Wanga and AGK Good Luck, who just confirmed that they can hear me, as much as I love them uh, and I want to give them money, 
I will be unable to if I don't understand and if I don't have the data on how well their business is doing. All right. So that's what we're going to be talking about this uh, topic today for everyone here to understand what record keeping is, the benefits of record keeping, and then how simple books can help you keep and monitor your records. Then after you keep that record, then how do you generate those data and use it for financial analysis? And from there, John will take over uh, will take over the session. So just straight up, uh, going straight up, what is record keeping? Record keeping simply refers to the process of collecting, organizing, and storing important information and documents related to your business activities. So it's basically keeping a record of everything that happens in your business. So have you made the sales documenting it? Have you uh, spent money for uh, purchases? Have you spent money for buying one, paying for one utility or paying for one bill? Have it recorded. Once you have all this recorded, it is then very easy for you to determine how well your business is doing. Um, what revenue, what volume of revenue you are generating, in what period. If you know this revenue that you're generating, you can make projections, all right? When you know the revenue or the basis that you're in, uh, if you know the basis uh, of revenue that you're generating, then you can tell if business is growing or if business is coming down, right? You're able to keep track of your income. You're able to keep track of your expenses. You're able to keep track of your sales, of your purchases, and any other financial transactions that happens in your business. That simply is what record keeping is. And it is so basic, but yet we are not doing it. So the goal from this meeting, or one of the goals from this meeting, is that you will take record keeping seriously. And once you start keeping records, then the, 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 the opportunity that that opens up for to you is limitless. Now you can say, oh, I'm just a freelancer, and I just do one or two gigs in a week or three gigs in a month. Why am I keeping records? Right? But even you as a freelancer, it is very, very essential for you to keep records. Remember, record keeping, and I will talk about it in the next slide. Record keeping is not just to, uh, what's it called now? Record keeping is the data telling you where you are right now. When you have that data, you can make better decisions about the future and how you should go. So yes, you are just doing two transactions right now. But what's stopping you from doing four transactions tomorrow or five transactions tomorrow? How about if you get a gig and uh you get a, a much bigger gig what is the evidence that you have the capacity to be able to deliver you even have some gigs asking you for financial records to show your financial capacity to show that you have done jobs in that capacity before now all right then when you're talking about growing your revenue or scaling your revenue if you do not have record how do you identify the potentials and the opportunities for you to be able to scale your revenue so we'll just go straight to talking about uh, benefits. So first is that it provides a clear understanding of your financial position. When you keep your record, you can tell specifically, as of uh, June 2023, I have made 10 million naira, or I've made $50,000, or I've made 10,000 euros, whatever the amount, right? And it is on that basis that you can say, oh, next month I want to grow over this amount. How do I go about this amount? Do you want to investigate the 10,000 euros that you made this month or the one 10 million that you made? How did you get it? Who are the people that made contributed to that revenue? How do you, can you engage them? Can they become repeat customers? Can you remarket them? Can these people give you referrals? But if you don't have records of these, you might not be able to, you won't be able to take full advantage of this opportunity. The second is that it helps you make informed decisions. A lot of businesses that I speak with, a lot of entrepreneurs that I speak with, tell me they make decisions based on trends or based on what they call, um, what's this common saying now? Uh, in more or less intuition. You make critical business decisions based on intuition. And that is why we have a lot of businesses failing. No major organization makes businesses based on, no matter how uh, intuitive the MD is. No, you make it based on data. So it's very, very critical that you keep records because if you don't have records, you cannot keep data. Thirdly is that keeping records helps you to secure financing and attract investors. There is money in Nigeria. A quick analysis that we did showed that the top five banks in Nigeria have asset base worth over 40 trillion naira. 
the top five banks in Nigeria have asset base worth over 40 trillion naira. How much are you looking for? As, a, as an entrepreneur, why are you not able to secure that financing? Could it be because the banks do not have ways to validate your income or your revenue? Or even if your business is a profitable venture. So to secure financing, to attract even investors, you need to have data. All right, you need to have data. And then lastly is to plan for the future. It is very easy to say, well, I'm generating 10 million naira right now and I want to generate 20 million naira next month or next year. But if you have no basis of where to start from, how then can you make projections of, oh, I want to make so, so, so amount next month? If you're starting from ground zero without knowing where you are, which is where it is, ground zero, you cannot say you want to do 2x. 2x of zero is still zero. All right. So we're just going to go straight to how the simple books help you to keep records. And here, I'm just going to do a quick demo. Uh, I'll just do a quick demo of our platform. All right. Uh, please, just to confirm that we can all still hear me again. I'd like to confirm that we can all still hear me uh, before I proceed. All right. And I'm also sharing my screen now. Yes, loud and clear. Loud and clear. Awesome. Also, confirm you can see my screen. Yes. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you very much, John. All right. I'll just go straight to it. So, Simple Books has been built as a simple, easy to use accounting solution for small businesses. If you registered for this event, one of the things that we did is that we sent an invite um, to you to sign up and open an account on Simple Books. And uh, we've seen a couple of you already do that. If you haven't, please ensure that even while we're on this call, you click on the link that was sent to you and you complete your account verification. If you haven't, if you didn't get that link for any reason, please send an email to hello at simplebks.com, uh, simplebks.com, hello at simplebks.com, and our team would quickly identify where the challenge is and ensure you get your invite. So once you come onto Simple Books, it's a very easy to use platform. So you just uh, provide your business details and you create an account. After creating an account, you are brought to the Get Started page. I won't do too much on it. So at the Get Started page, you are able to complete your business profile. So upload your business logo, input your business address, create bank accounts. You can do all that from the business profile. So that's this page. All right. And why do we need all this? So with your business logo, your business address, we print receipts. So uh, we generate receipts for every invoices that you do or every sales that you record. And those receipts are automatically sent to your customers via emails and SMS and sometimes WhatsApp if you subscribe to it. All right. And now that email that we receipt is a standard uh, receipt template with your company name, your company logo. So that even helps to build your brand and be, put professionalism in your brand when you are recording transactions uh, for your business. Also, you are able to upload your inventory. So if you are uh, if you deal in physical products, you buy and sell or you manufacture products, you are able to create your inventory right there on the Get Started page. You can add as many bank accounts. So this is good for uh, reconciliation and also determining, uh, what's it called? Yeah, bank reconciliation, see where revenues are coming and which bank that you are putting the money in. It's also good for when you're sending invoices out, you can embed your bank details on the invoices directly. And of course, you can record your first sale. Uh, also, Simple Books allow you inviting members. For those of you who have staff, you can invite your staff. Or those of you who have partners, you can invite your partners. And both of you have different access rights. You can manage that access right um, in the settings page. When you come to settings and teams, you can manage the roles, uh, have access, uh, grant different access right to your uh, to your staff. But for today, I'll just focus majorly on the record keeping. So with simple books, um, and I believe we are speaking largely to um, uh, um, quick content creators, creatives, and uh, freelancers. So I will just limit it to the areas that would concern you majorly. So with simple books, you can record transactions on your platform by simply clicking on the add new record the add view record icon. If you are using a, a computer, you would see it highlighting inflow or outflow. All right. Inflow is saying uh, that's money or uh, value coming to your business. That's inflow. 
or as money or any value gone out of your business that outflow all right if you are using the mobile version you just see the add new record but when you click on the add new record you can still see the same inflow and outflow display so quickly let me just show how the mobile version looks like exactly so this is how the mobile version looks like so you can choose inflow or outflow so majority of businesses the major source of inflow is your sales so that is preloaded by default and you enter the service or the item name so let's say um okay let's say um what do i we provide now so i'm providing online course all right online course so when you're recording your inflow you've made a sales so this is if you have made a sales all right you record an online course um you charge ten thousand naira for that course all right and uh, someone has ordered for 10 all right 10 tickets of it or maybe just one ticket of it just Michael, adding that you please zoom in on your screen yes. uh yeah it's like uh control plus i think it's on the mac yeah there we go and guys yes. please turn your if you're using a phone turn your phone to landscape mode so you can see the screen better okay. portrait okay. portrait won't do much justice to what is happening on the screen okay all right, sir, please go ahead. All right, thank you very much. All right, so you type in the service or the item name, type in the selling price you're charging, type in the quantity, all right? So like the online course I mentioned right now. So like this, you can record the transaction directly. However, if you want to provide more information about the item, on, once you type in the name, you will see an icon saying create a new product. So if you click on that, it asks you to, oh, is it a product or a service? All right, so let's say this is a service, all right? I online course, I can provide measurement. So how am I measuring it? Is it a piece, is it a unit, um, is it kg, is it per hour, is it per day? So I'll just stick with units here. I can upload a picture if I have a picture of the service and then I state the unit price for the service, 10,000. I can add more fuel to give a description, um, choose a category for it and so on and so forth, all right? But I will just leave it blank. You don't need to create it. Uh, if you don't, we'll automatically create for you. But you uh, you can as well create it if you want to add more information. All right. Now you can add multiple services in the same um, transaction. So let's say the person is buying an online cost ten thousand, and the person will also be doing the booking, one on one booking. All right, for your service, one on one booking. All right, and you charge, uh, let's say you charge 50,000 naira per hour. All right, and the person is doing five hours. So by default, so for this account, uh, the currency is in Naira. You can change the currency when you go to settings. All right, you can change the currency uh, to any currency in the world, basically. All right, now the total for this service is automatically created, which is 260,000. If there's any other charges that, I'm, uh, that I charge for this service, I can easily add it. Uh, so let's say I charge VAT. VAT is at 7.5%. I just add that automatically there. The amount is automatically updated. So who is my customer? I want to look for someone's name on the chat. All right. Um, AGK Good Luck. Awesome. AGK Good Luck is my customer. All right. So I just type AGK Good Luck on here. Now, just, just the same way with the... Just, 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 the just on the John, side of yes. Olakuye. Yes, I just noticed something that you were doing. And um, is I mean, we are learning here about data entry and all of this, but there are some things that you are doing um, on the side that I'm really glad that you are doing that people can learn from. I mean, something as simple as adding that VAT amount. It would, it would probably shock you how many businesses do not collect VAT. And, and, and guys, if you were on night school, I don't know if you were on night school on, uh, on Friday night, where I was talking about, guys, if you have been messing around with tax, you have to clean up your act now, all right? Mm -hmm. Especially this coming administration. You, you guys, I, I, I don't know if I, how, how many of you guys were born when um, the current president was first governor of Lagos State. All right. One of the first, one of his first priorities in Lagos was tax. I can't, I can't forget that period, tax. Because there, there was this period that um, I don't know if you remember. Like only there was a period that I think the federal government at the time withheld allocations yeah. or something from Lagos, Location. and Lagos had to survive for a number of months. I, I don't remember how many months, but for a yes, number of months. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, so Lagos survived at that time uh, from internally generated revenue. 
So yeah. the Lagos had yeah. to learn how to survive in those conditions by being more tax efficient than other states, right? So one of the things we are we are for, foreseeing is that all these little things that businesses used to do before and get away with, like not being so um, efficient with recording tax, all these many of us on this call don't even know what percentage is VAT. That's to show you that you, you probably never recorded your VAT before. <laughs> 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 so very soon, there are certain things you will not be able to do in this country if you've not gotten your tax clearance, your tax certificate. Yep. So everything is doing right here, even as little as recording your VAT. Guys, this is very important, okay? So I, I just want I just to underline that um, because I know my audience very well. <laughs> okay, so please, please go ahead. Yeah, <laughs> please, thank you very much, John. Um, mm. Please do chip in any time. So that we okay. can have a maximum uh, understanding. All right. So, AGK, good luck. I'm going to be quitting as a customer. So, for customers, just the same way, you can type it and leave and move ahead. But if you have other information about the customer, like their phone number, their email, uh, we encourage that you provide that. So, let's say AGK, good luck is um, this is his phone number. Sorry. Um, don't mind my system. It just automatically picked all my details. All right, educate, good luck. So you can provide the phone number and the email. So like I said, if you provide the email, immediately this transaction is recorded. We send a receipt to educate, good luck. Uh, in this case, but I'm actually using my own email for dummy. And right, and you can submit um, that email creation. All right. Uh, okay, I think I didn't spell educate's name correctly. All right, ADK, okay, ADK, good luck. So I can just select it, all right? Um, also, you can confirm if it was a, if it's a credit transaction or if the person pays you in full, you're able to record that on this model. So if it's a credit transaction, just so this is a credit transaction, we ask you, what was your fund payment? In this case, the bill is 279500 Let's say ADK paid 79500 right? Meaning it's to balance us 200000 all right, and he promises to pay the balance on the 30th. Now, what we do with this balance is that automatically we send scheduled reminders to AGK ahead of the time for AGK to be able to pay you for the service. All right, and that reminders as your account details. You can also embed payment links. We are in partnership with Paystack, so you can embed Paystack payment links such that AGK can just click on that link and pay you directly, or you can just provide your account details and AGK can pay for that service. So after this, you click on create transaction. Because you signify that 79500 was paid, we're asking you where was that paid into? Was it paid to cash or was it paid to your bank? All right. So in this demo, we are using ABC Bank. You just select ABC Bank. Automatically, the breakdown is written out for you here. So the bill is 279500 79500 was paid to ABC Bank and 200000 is on credit. All right, and you just click add transaction. Immediately you do this, the email, like I said, is sent automatically to AGK, and here you have a receipt of your transaction. All right, online calls one unit for 10,000, one on one booking, five units for 250,000, subtotal 260,000. The VAT element on the bill is 19,500, making the grand total 279. Amount paid 79, amount owed 200,000. This is the due date for the transaction. Here is the date of the transaction, and here is the due date of the transaction. Of course, it is built to educate good luck with a phone number like this. All right. And here is the account number that I said. So in the receipt that EDK would have gotten, the your account details will be here. Telling EDK to please pay the amount owed to this account. All right. So that's how you record a simple transaction. And once you come to your transactions tab, easily you can see the volume of that transaction. So you can see your sales. If you've done purchases, you can see it. If you've done expenses, you can see it. And then your account balances are also updated. So this is a demo account in which we've done other transactions. That's why it's not um, uh, exact figures, all right? And so here, at every point in time, you can just come in and see the transaction that has happened. You can view the receipts at another time you can print the receipt. You can um, download the receipt in the PDF document. Let me download this so that you see. Or you can share it. So when you click on share, it generates a link that you can use to send that receipt out. All right. So this is how the uh, PDF document looks like. All right. I hope you can also see it. This is how the PDF document of the receipt looks like. 
so that you can also share. Um, so if you are using maybe a mobile phone, you can download the PDF and send out. This, um, on top of the text account, is your logo, all right? Now, that is for transaction. There are other transactions that you can record. Under inflow, you can record capital. Did someone invest capital in your business? Did you yourself invest capital? You can record borrowings. Did you take a loan uh, for someone to for your business? Or did someone pay you simply for a service charge? Maybe um, some that are into sales, you already recorded a sales. Then someone paid you shipping afterwards. You can record it separately. Or someone paid you for VAT. So you build the person. They paid you just the regular fee without the VAT. You can record the VAT. Or did you earn interest from bank or your investment? You can record it. Did someone who is owing you, did they repay you? Debt repayments, you can record it. Did you get a gift from someone? You can record it. Or is there any other thing that brought income into your business? You can record it. Then for outflows, outflow can be expenses. For expenses, you choose the category of expense. And then you can specify if it's a direct or prepaid expense. Uh, basically, the difference is that for prepaid, you want to spread the expense over a period of time. So typically, <coughs> I like to use rent as an example for prepaid. So if you, um, you paid rent for 1.2 million and that your rent is for one year, you don't record it as a direct expense. It's a prepaid expense because you are spreading that rent for a period of one year. All right. Immediately you choose prepaid, we ask you what is the duration you want to spend it in, in months. So you just type 12 in your, your duration and automatically it spreads it at 100,000 naira automatically in your balance sheet and your PL. All right. It can also be purchases. Did you buy goods? Um, are you repaying credits that you owe? Did you withdraw any money for your personal use? Did you give out loans? Do you have bad debt you want to write out? Or did you pay VAT or any form of tax to the government? So those are um, other outflows that you can record on the transactions. Also for expenses, you are able to upload the receipt of the expense, all right, as a proof. And we store that for you on Simple Books as a proof of the expense. So this is the basic way you record transactions on Simple Books. There are other modules that we also provide for you to record. Uh, I'll talk about invoicing very quickly because I know a lot of us uh, do invoice. All right. Um, yeah, I'll just go straight to the invoicing. I'll just read in some of the comments that was there. So for invoice, you're able to issue invoices to people um, setting a, a payment date for your invoice, all right? I think uh, for a lot of freelancers, you would be using this. So, so someone says, oh, I want your service. I'm going to pay you 500,000, uh, but I would pay 100,000 now, pay 400,000 at a later date. You can capture all that in the invoice, all right? So the invoice, the date you are issuing the invoice, the due date for the invoice, you enter the invoice number, all right? So enter customer's name. I will choose a DK already. So because I've created a DK before now, his name automatically pops up. All right, and his details also load on the platform. All right, um, so let's say the same one on one, one on one booking. Also, because I created that service the first time, it's automatically saved onto the system. All right, so one on one booking this time around, AGK has booked us for two hours. I can add a note two hours on Sunday, two hours on Sunday from 6 p.m. I can add a note. I can also offer AGK a discount. All right. I didn't mention that earlier. I can offer AGK a discount and say I'm giving AGK 10% discount on this service. All right. I enter my terms. Please make upfront payments of 50%. All right. And balance to be paid not later than 24 hours before due date. All right, you can add all those terms and condition into it. So since we said 150%, so let's assume that uh, AGK has already paid 45,000 and the balance due is 45. Um, and you're supposed to pay before the due date of 18. So 18, I will make it 17 since we said 74 hours, all right? Now, yeah, I mentioned earlier, the bank details, ABC Bank is automatically populated. If I want Paystack uh, link on it, I will click on Insert Paystack. For those who are doing using Paystack for the first time, what would typically happen is when you click on it, it's going to ask you to set, choose, I mean, to enter your, um, what's it called now, your collection account, all right, where you want to receive your payment from, since the money will be paid directly into your account. 
and you can choose any bank in Nigeria to, uh, to receive your payment. I can also choose invoice reminders and then I preview my invoice. All right, this is my invoice, one on one booking, two hours on Sunday. Uh, it was for 100,000, but I gave a 10% discount. So that's 90,000. And 50, 45,000 is paid, balance 45,000. I can see the uh, upfront payment of 50% balance, that, and all. then I can see payment options, either through bank transfer or through pay stack link. If I click on this pay stack link now, it's going to take, let me just click on it. It's going to ask me to actually pay the balance for the service. To pay for the service, all right? But we are not paying, we are not doing this, all right? So I'll just go ahead, all right? Uh, then I just approve. Once I approve the invoice, the invoice is automatically created. And I can either download it into uh, a PDF document or I can as well just send it uh, via email. So, so, yeah, this is the invoice part payment. And this is our payment details, all right? So here you are also able to track all the invoices that has been paid, all the invoices that is awaiting payment, and send reminders. All right. So when you click on resend, what you are doing is you send reminders to um, your customers for them to repay. But remember, if you had ticked the automated reminder when you are creating the invoice, so let me try and do a new invoice again. So you see that if you had ticked this. We automatically send reminders which you in copy so you know uh when we send the information to your customers so these are ways that you can record your transactions for simple books uh now after recording the next is how do i get my report how do i track how my transaction is doing so you can come on the transactions and you will see a summary of the transactions that has happened uh, basically all the transactions listed after the other you can also come to inventory and view transaction by product, all right? Or view your transaction by your service, the one-on-one -on -one booking that we created the last time. All right, um, view transactions by product. So this is how it looks like. You can see the transaction that's happened on each particular product. You can also see the summary of each, the value you've gotten from each product. And if you have a stock also, you can also view transactions by customer. So in this case, I can come to educate good luck and see the transactions that I've done with HDK. So HDK has done two purchases, one of 279, I mean, two sales uh, from our business, one for 279,500, the other for 90,000. I can see that there's an invoice that the state of the sale part payment for HDK. And I can see uh, debts. So HDK is owing me 200,000 and 45,000. For the two invoices that we, I mean, for the two transactions that we issued, uh, then you can come to debtors and creditors. So here you can automatically see GK good luck, uh, the total amount of transaction and the outstanding outstanding balance uh, from 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 that transactions. I'll just go straight to. I'll just round up with this. Oh, sorry. Before that, um, so with all the transactions, you can only generate your profit and loss and your and your balance sheet, your sales report all those automatically from your simple books platform so you can see uh based on these records now i've made 3.5 million in profit uh from january 2023 to 11 compared to the same period in 2022 where i made a loss i can change the future range for this my report as i deem fit sorry i just clicked on something totally different all right uh but lastly is on the transactions tab you are able to export your data all right. Uh, either import data from Excel sheet or export data to Excel sheets, and then that data is what you can use for the analysis uh, that um, John talked about earlier. And for me, I think I want to go back to John. Or do we take questions first, John? Okay, let's just take a, a few questions that I stored. I think there are questions that you can answer really quickly uh, because okay. of uh, the nature of the question. So the first one. Um, Someone said, can this be used for school management? I think so, but let me let you handle that. Okay, so the platform is not tailored fully to school, but yes, you can use it for school management. And we have a couple of customers who do that. Uh, what I would encourage is, uh, I would drop that email earlier, reach out to us so that we can help you um, tailor it for schools. Typically, what that would mean is your students will be the customers, all right? And you can record uh, every revenue generated from each customer and see uh, when revenue is due. 
So yes, you can use it for school, uh, but you might need some guidance in doing that. So just reach out to us and we'll be glad to help with that. Okay, so guys, look at the email on the screen. That's hello at simple books and books is spelled B-K-S. Hello at simplebooks.com uh, to get anything customized for what you need. And for those of you who have not yet uh, uh, gotten access or maybe you just registered for this today because there's some of you that registered today and you don't know what's going on, um, you, you are going to be onboarded with free access to simple books. And if you've, if, if you've not gotten your invite link, just send an email, even though as long as you're registered, Simple Books already has your details. They're going to onboard you automatically, eventually. But that's the email address. Make a screenshot. It's hello at simplebooks.com. The books is spelled B-K-S. Olushegun um, asked the question earlier. He said, can the app read information directly from uploaded receipts, or do you need to manually input the information? OK, no, you can't read from uploaded receipts. You need to manually um impute it um but it can uh, it can uh, it can take csv so if you have your data in csv you can upload it from csv awesome then uh john bull says is simple books free or paid it's freemium so there's a free uh tier and that's what everyone is going to be onboarded with and that free tier has most of what you need as a small business to run your business right now there are some uh premium um features in there but use the free version and any of the premium premium uh, aspects that you need, you can upgrade as necessary, okay? Sure. Uh, let me see. Okay, this question is a bit technical, but see if you can answer that. It said that there was a title uh, with this had remaining at the total end of the invoice document that read zero, even though there is still 200,000 Naira to be paid. Could you please explain? I'm not sure what that must be oh. referring to. Sorry, um, is it the he said the invoice, right? Uh, yes, uh, I think it's the invoice. The all total right. end uh, of the invoice. All right, so what is read there is amount paid, amount paid zero, not uh, what's it called now? So, look, uh, are you just seeing my screen? Yes, we are. All right, so just um, look at this transaction I just recorded now. So, the total amount is 15,000. But I, is you can also add if the person has paid any amount for that particular transaction. Remember, typically invoices are issued. Uh, invoices are issued to receive payment for services that has been offered or services that has been agreed. All right. So if you have agreed a service with someone, you issue an invoice, and that invoice is an ask for uh, it's you making a request for payment. All right. But in some scenarios someone has paid for a particular service and is asking you for your invoice so the amount paid here i guess that's where you saw zero and is asking you how much uh, how much has the person paid you can leave it at zero if the person hasn't paid anything or if the person has paid you just enter the amount paid and the due the balance will be automatically calculated if you put uh, 500 you can see the balance is automatically calculated 14.5 you put 5000 automatically calculated to 10000 Right. Okay, so Narcisse has a question, a very good one. He says, the audience addressed seems to be only Nigeria. What about other countries like the Congo Republic? I think he's uh, watching from the Congo. Oh. All right, so like I mentioned, the platform is multi-currency, so you can actually use it across any location. Um, typically, what would change is your currency. So you can come to account settings and change your currency. All right, I don't know what okay, currency it is. Congo. Yeah, it's CFA francs. Aha, exactly. So you can choose CFA franc automatically updated. Then the second thing is your tax rates, tax of VAT. Okay. So we don't, that's actually why we didn't configure the system with the Nigerian tax by default, because we understand okay. different countries use different tax. So if you just put 10% here as your tax rate automatically, so the next time you want to encode a transaction and you add VAT, the 10% is automatically displayed. Awesome. All right. Awesome. So actually any country can use it. And because of these automatically, let me just issue an invoice. I mean, let me record a transaction. So you will see that the currency is automatically changed to CFA. You can see that. Awesome. So actually any country can use it. Okay. So I hope that uh, answers your question, Narcisse. Um, Mohammed says, what's the duration for the free version? Uh, to the best of my knowledge, I don't think it has a duration. It just has uh, the free, the free, um, the free features. Yes, it just has the free features. 
And as you grow and you need uh, the premium version, you can upgrade, upgrade as needed. But there is no time duration for this free version. Uh, Shegun says, does your app help to capture foreign transactions? I think that should be yes, as, as we yeah. answered. Uh, yeah. I see. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So that is that, guys. Um, I would advise, that, I mean, we could never run out of questions. Just log into your access to Simple Books and just play around with the system. Click here, click here, get curious, get to the system and see how this can help uh, to meet your business needs. And if you have any questions, feel free to send an email to hello at simplebooks.com. Remember, the books is spelled B-K-S. Uh, I love some questions here, um, some remarks here, like uh, um, James E has a remark here. He says, this makes bookkeeping a lot easier. Now we can breathe from unnecessary spreadsheets. Of course, um, darn straight. I remember that a lot of these features, are very, these are similar to features that this other app used to have. You remember Wave apps? You know, a lot of uh, business owners in Nigeria used to use Wave apps. And then one day, Wave apps sent an email to everybody that was using it, including me, that, sorry, we are now, uh, we are, we are, we are, from today onwards, we are now going to be servicing only our American markets. Ah, see, heartbreak. <laughs> After people had spent so long building on, because myself, when I started, you know, I was we're always in wave apps, you know, everywhere. They all said, served all yeah. of us breakfast one day, saying, "Sorry, we can't save you anymore. We are now focused on our American market." Yay! <laughs> you know? So it's such a a pleasure seeing that this um served um um a lot of us here in the African markets and beyond. Okay, um, do you have anything else to show us, Olakule, before we move into the AI segment? No. I think that's it. I already talked about it. So once you have all the transactions recorded, you can just export it here. Once you click on the export button, uh, your data is automatically downloaded onto your system. And that data is what you will be taking to, um, what John will be taking us on right now. Amazing. So John, over to you. Okay. Uh, welcome, everybody. I think everybody is uh, must be conversant with the gospel of john so to speak that is me uh welcome everybody so good to have you guys here again um it is always oops hold on a sec let me share the right screen give me a sec it's always a pleasure to be with you guys um you guys know that i love ai so much <laughs> so whenever I'm, I'm teaching you guys ai i don't feel like i'm doing work at all at all i don't feel like i'm doing work at all whoops um i just uh want to show you guys how to maximize your business using ai and all the tips and tricks so one thing to note guys is that i am currently using the paid version of hold on a sec i'm currently using the paid version of um i'm using the paid version of chat gpt as you can see here it says chat gpt plus please one more time for those who are just joining if there's any issue with you um viewing the screen change your settings to 720p go to settings change the quality to 720p usually youtube sets it to automatic automatic means that if you're using a poor internet service provider it downgrades the quality so that at least you can at least uh, stream it, but upgrade it to the highest 720p and it's going to be a lot clearer. So one thing to note is that I'm using the paid version of ChatGPT and that is ChatGPT+. I don't know if this thing I want to show you is available on the free plan, but if you are on ChatGPT+, look at the top here, it shows GPT 3.5, but then it also shows GPT 4. Can you see what I'm looking at here? So when you open GPT-4, there are going to be some options here. There's the default. That's not what we want. There's the browse with Bing. That's not what we want. There's the plugins at the bottom. No, we want to choose code interpreter. That one that says alpha. So you're going to select code interpreter. Okay. Are we guys for, um, are we all following? Awesome. Are we following? Okay. So we're going to see the on that GPT-4, you'll see code interpreter. Okay. So this is what will do the magic. Code interpreter has so many amazing functions, but I want to just focus on what we came here to do today. I want to, I, I am here to blow your mind as usual. All right. Now, uh, what Olakunle left us with, um, let me see, can this, oh, can you imagine? I didn't know you could hide sidebar. 
All right. So what Olakunle left us with was how we could enter our data on simple books. Abi, did we follow? Yes. And then when you enter all your customer data on simple books, you can also export that data. Okay. So, um, I mean, I don't want to show you my personal business records. So what we did was that I went into my simple books account and I entered um, some dummy records that we can use for this demonstration. Okay. I went in there and I entered some dummy records and I exported them from simple books so that we can use it for this demonstration. So all the data here, you might see email addresses and phone numbers, perhaps everything you are seeing here does not exist. It is all dummy data um, just to protect the identity of the original of my original customers. Okay. All right. So I'm going to hit the plus sign. Um, th 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 there's a high chance that YouTube might even take this video down because YouTube doesn't like um, YouTube does not like uh, email addresses being shown on a video. They like to protect people's data. There's a new law that YouTube just put up, but we'll figure it out. Anyway, so once you are on GPT-4 code interpreter, you are going to click on the plus sign. The plus sign here allows you to upload a file. So I'm going to hit the upload. I've hit the plus sign and I'm going to, yikes, I'm going to go click on my CSV file. So it says dummy data.csv. It's currently uploading, as you can see. Now it's uploaded. Now I am going to, um, it's uploaded here. I'm going to type something. I'm going to say, this is my transaction data. And you guys, remember, all right? I know you guys call me the prompt king, the chat GPT, the AI prompt king. But there is none of this that is in a book. It is just my style of using chat GPT, okay? Those of you that have watched me on AI Weekend, you understand that there is no textbook for how to talk to chat GPT. Just use my style, okay? And I want you guys to imagine you have an employee, okay? Imagine you have an employee that is the best data analyst in the world, depending on what you're using chat GPT for. In this case, we're using it for data analysis. So imagine you have an employee that is working in your company, that's working for you, that is the best data analyst in the world. And you, you are not really good at data analysis. You are just, you are the CEO, you are a generalist, you don't, how would you talk to that your six-figure data analyst? You are paying him millions of Naira every month to be a data analyst. How would you talk to him? Okay, so you're going to talk to him in layman's terms and in simple English, okay, so that you can get what you want. So don't be intimidated. We're just using everyday grammar. So I'm saying this is my transaction data. Um, it contains all purchases of my online courses over time. I'm just speaking in English. There's no specific framework, all right? Now I'm going to ask it, um, have a look. And tell me what operations you can perform for me. Okay. One of the best ways to use Chat GPT that many people don't know is that you can ask Chat GPT questions on how to use it better. You can ask Chat GPT on questions on how to do its job. Okay. So you, you can see what I typed there. Have a look. I'm going to hit send message. See, it's working. Finish work. So it's what it's telling me. Like this is easy. So easy. All right. Those of you that are saying uh, code interpreter is not available in Nigeria, ah, ah, people of God, you you guys should be following my programs now. I've told you guys how to be getting around these things. You can never use living in a third world nation as an excuse. Eh? You, do, you attend night school, you will get all these things. Attend my programs, you get all these things. Okay. I can't tell you exactly what it is now. I don't want YouTube to ban this video, but you should know what to do. You you should never use third world as an excuse. 
there are ways you can get exactly what a third world, what a first world country is getting, even though you are in Nigeria. Figure it out, okay? Uh -huh. I know sometimes the features arrive to Nigeria and third world countries late, but you should know how to get it now, now, now. Eh? You get how? We are Nigerians now. We are supposed to be smartest because of these, uh, <laughs> these issues. We're supposed to know what's up. <laughs> so I can't say it now, but everybody, you can use your tongue to catch your teeth. You know what's up, eh? All right. So here's what it has told me, okay? It has said, um, look at this. It says, your transaction data contains the following columns. Customer name, uh, the name of the customer who made the purchase. That it has looked into the data and it says, based on the data, here are a few potential operations and analyses that can be performed. Look over here. It says, one, descriptive analysis. You can calculate the total revenue, the average transaction amount, the number of transactions, okay? The top products, very important. Determine the most popular courses based on the number of purchases, okay? Customer segmentation can segment customers based on their purchasing habits. For instance, identify customers who often purchase high-priced courses, customers who purchase frequently, etc. Interesting. Can you see that? Revenue analysis. Analyze the revenue generated from each course. This is Chad GPT giving you this. So, yeah? You needed expensive software to do this before. Data validation. You can check for any inconsistencies inconsistency in data, such as missing values, incorrect email formats, etc. Okay? Time series analysis. If a daytime field is added to the data, it will be possible to perform time-based analysis, such as identifying sales trends over time, seasonality in purchases, etc. Can you guys see this? Geographical analysis. If we have the customer's location data, we could analyze sales by region. Interesting. It now says, please let me know which of these, or perhaps something else, you'd be interested in. Guys, can you see this? craziness can you see this craziness now she say i'm glad i says in the congo i'm saying this is magic all right this is why we are here to look at the magic right to see the magic all right now let's do some magic now what like, now it's, it's like an all you can eat buffet i'm moving i'm even wondering what to do now okay so let me just ask it this is awesome please show me my top and customers in a tabular format. Um, uh, I would say represent their name, um, their name, um, email. Let me say redacted. I, I hope it knows what redacted means. Let me just try. Phone. Redacted. Um, top 10 customers. Um, total number of transactions and total spend. So redacted, um, redacted with, let me see, asterisk. So if, for what redacted means is that to put, I don't want YouTube to ban my video because YouTube doesn't like you showing people's email addresses to protect data, um, just for data privacy. So when it says redacted, it means that they will just use asterisk to clean out the email addresses or phone numbers. So I don't know if it knows what this means. I'm just trying based on my um, i'm just trying so let me see what happens i hope it knows what redacted means i'm just hoping i'm just hoping all right just watch me watch me watch me it's working i'm on charge gpt the day charge gpt servers will blow just so that it's me that caused it <laughs> because the kind of prompts I give it. <laughs> I think you'll be like, who be this guy again? Oh, beautiful. I'm so can it, can, you see, can you guys see the redacted command? See what it did? Can you guys see what the redacted command did? Beautiful. I'm glad. I've never done it before. I just imagined it now and thought that this might work. Ah. Why is it showing me only Keith Sanders or oh. There are multiple kids Sanders then. Okay, that's fine. Mm 
It says, please note that multiple entries for the same customer represent different transactions that have different email or phone number information. This may occur if a customer uses different contact information for different transactions. Okay, cool. So now it has shown me my top 10 customers and the total spend. So this kid, Sanders, has spent $816 over six transactions. This is their email address. This is their phone number. All right? And so on and so forth. And uh, it's showing total spend and total number of transactions. Do you guys know that I can also tell ChatGPT to export a CSV file of just these top 10 customers? Watch. Please create a CSV. No, not CSV. Let me say an Excel. Please create an Excel spread sheet of these 10 records. And there's no limit. So you don't have to use 10. You can use 20, 200, 1,000, whatever it is. Um, for, let me speak common English. For me to download and send to the accounts department. It's going to just take these out of the entire spreadsheet of 300 records. It's going to just give me this. Can you see? It has given me the download file for just these 10 customers. And I can download it right now <laughs> and send us an attachment. You see how I've extracted the top 10 performing. Okay? Isn't this amazing, guys? You can just click here, download file, to give you this as an Excel sheet. sheet. Click here to download it, send it to whoever, or keep it in your records, whatever you want to do. All right? All right, now let's do some more. Okay. Um, um, think like a growth hacker. I, I, by the way, a growth hacker is someone who goes into a business and um, figures out the most explosive ways to grow that business with very little um, money. All right. Show me the top performing products um, their seasonality and the locations that purchase them the most oops Johnny boy, why are you not spelling this correctly? Ah, that's how you spell there now. That's how you spell there. Kushna YMU. I went to school. Their seasonality and the location that I purchased them the most. Um, then uh, advise me on um, what growth activities to perform based on the presented data. I did not write this down before, guys. I'm just freestyling right now just to show you that you can get the best out of ChatGPT just by thinking a certain way. Think like a CEO, all right? Oh, there's no location or date time information. Oh, okay, that's fine. Could you provide additional data with date, time, and location for each transaction? If not, hmm. Okay. Um, he, watch me do some crazy stuff now. I'll say update the original spreadsheet with dummy data include the columns um, include the following columns watch this states in the United States. Um, 
date and time of transaction. Um, wait, let me see. Wait. I would say update original spreadsheet to include the following columns. I want to be very clear. Then um, update all records with dummy data. Man, I'm sure you have to be badass with ChatGPT, man. This is going to be cray, crazy. <laughs> cray, crazy. Cray, crazy. Thank you, guys. I see your lovely comments. My, I aim to please. I aim to serve. See, ChatGPT is thinking. I said, the day that catch ChatGPT's server will burn, just know that it's me, by mistake. Guy, redact it now. You don't have sense. I'm going to show somebody's email address now. Jimbo will start disturbing me. Ah. Here are the first few. <laughs> What's doing you? You can't use your sense. Then update all records with dummy data. When showing me the result, redact um, email and phone data. Ah, what's doing? If I don't tell you, you don't know. Call of employees is this. See if I submit, Jerry. They have to tell you everything. This is not why I employed you, Charge GPT. Don't try me. I'll, I'll send you back to your village. Oh, yeah, start working. Think hard, think hard, think hard. Charge GPT, you cough blood today. Maybe I'm paying you $20 a, pay a month. You will end your keep. I'm not paying twenty dollars a month to be answering simple questions like "What is the weather in Manhattan?" You will cough blood today. Do work. <laughs> there we go. Ah, this guy. You will not redact it before if I don't tell you. I thought you went to Harvard. Eh, Charge pity. <laughs> I thought you went to Harvard. <laughs> hmm? Did you buy your certificate? Now we are talking. There we go. There we go. There we go. <laughs> there we go. Now it says, let's proceed with the analysis of top of our main products. Hey, think. Now, I want you guys to notice what, what I'm doing. While it's working and doing this, let me explain something that, something that I did. You know, if you notice, normally, normally, if I'm teaching you guys normally, I would break the commands into two separate commands. So normally, uh, what I would say, um, what I would say, I'll first of all say update the original spreadsheet to include the following columns, states and dates and time. When it does that, I'll now say then update all records. But I'm lumping them all into one command because uh, chat GPT plus only allows us 25 queries every three hours. All right. So I tend to uh, lump multiple commands in one so that I don't use all my quota. If you notice, I did that again up here. Normally, I would have just said, show me the top performing products, their seasonality, and the location that purchased them the most first. When it shows me the data, I will now say, then advise me. All right. But because of that limit, I, ha I tend to, to batch the commands into one. So they are like three commands in one. So that is why after it gave me the result here, it went on to the next command because they are all batched in one. So I don't finish my quota um, accidentally. All right. So um, after showing me the, it says here's a snapshot of the updated, updated dummy data with redacted email and phone data. Fine. That's good. Then it's going on to say, now let's proceed with the analysis of the top performing products their seasonality, and the states that purchase them the most. It now says, based on this analysis, I'll then suggest some growth activities. Now it's saying, here are some top five products based on total sales along with the states where they are most popular and the months 
when they sell the most. Full stack development was purchased 55 times. Total sales was 6,361. Top state that purchased that course was New York. And the top month of purchase was March. Okay. Same thing with Java. We've done the analysis that's showing us all of that. All right. It's now saying, it's now giving us the advice based on this information. Here are a few growth activities you could consider. Number one, seasonal marketing. Increase marketing efforts for each product during its top month. Are you guys seeing this? For instance, advertise the full stack development course more heavily in March and the Java programming masterclass in August. Targeted advertising. Advertise more heavily in the states where each product is most popular. This could be done through online ads targeted to those specific regions or through partnerships with local institutions in those states. Bro, guy, which this is your highly paid data analyst that you have employed in your company, that you are paying $20 a month, ChatGPT Plus. This, you are paying for this advice, $20 a month instead of six figures. Okay, number three, special offers. Consider offering seasonal discounts or bundle deals during the top months for each product to boost sales. Four, product development. The popularity of these courses could indicate a demand for similar products. Consider developing more courses in these areas. Customer retention. Engage with customers who have purchased these top products and offer them special deals on future purchases or upgrades. Remember, it's important to keep testing and measuring the effectiveness of these strategies and adjust as necessary based on the results. Listen, gentlemen, can you guys see Winch, right? Can you guys see? Yeah, yeah, Daily Fire, you said, what you said here is true. You said even without paying $20, ChatGPT still has limits. Yes, but I just told you how to bypass those limits, okay? The same limits that you have are the same limits that I have. We all have the same limits, and the limits are 25 commands every three hours. So I just taught you how to bypass those limits by batching your commands instead of doing one by one. I had to learn that. When there were no limits, I was just firing commands one by one. But when they, they added the limits, I had to start batching my commands like I've taught you how to do, okay? So that will not be a problem, all right? Emmanuel is exactly what I'm saying, Emmanuel. You're saying, so ChatGPT can work as a business intelligence analyst. Yes, that's exactly what I'm telling you, bro. That's exactly what I'm telling you. I'm glad you are put it this way. The video that I created to market this workshop, I explained that, okay? This is what the biggest companies in the world use, all right? What the Fortune 500 companies use. And that is why they can create marketing campaigns at scale. And these marketing campaigns are predictable marketing campaigns because they are able to take previous data, run it through complex software that can inform them on future trends and inform their marketing decisions, which is why we brought on Lakunle on here to show you how to do the first part that many small businesses take for granted, and that is data. A lot of you guys have been in business for a while, and that time you've been in business has given you very rich data on what your customers like to buy. From what your customers like to buy, from what they like to make inquiries about, all of that data should be kept as precious gold, like crude oil. You should keep that data like precious gold and your free access to simple books would help you to enter in every single transaction that you get for your business. And if you have those transactions, if you have that transaction data elsewhere, maybe in Paystack or other platforms, you can download that data and upload it to simple books. All right. And then start keeping proper records because the more data you have over time, the better your output would be when you eventually carry it over to chat GPT and run your, your business intelligence operations. And Tina here is actually looking here and she's saying that even the premium version of, uh, of Simple Books is quite affordable, right? So, I mean, I, I think nobody has an excuse uh, here, all right? Uh, Adela here says, does editing a previously sent prompt uh, count as a new prompt? Yes, it counts as a new prompt. So, because of these limits, you have to read over your work again, okay? Read over your work. See, I love the way you guys are thinking. People are so wise. I love, see, look, see how AJK is already thinking. He's saying, how do I get a business analyst job? That is it, guy. Your customers don't even need to know that you are using ChatGPT <laughs> to do the job. 
you are now a business analyst. So this is for two different classes of people. There's one side who you have a business and you want to employ the world's greatest data analyst, ChatGPT. This system would help you do that. The second um, category of people are those who want to render business analysis or business intelligence as a service. All you have to do is to employ your ghost analyst. Your go like, just the way we have ghost writers, right? You can employ your ghost analyst. That is um, ChatGPT. You will get the job as a business as a business analyst or a data analyst, and let ChatGPT do the job for you. All right. Um, somebody was asking a question. Esther says, uh, "Can ChatGPT is not GTP, guys? It's GPT. Okay. Every, most people are saying GTP. Is GPT? Okay. She says, "Can ChatGPT?" perform visualization yes it can but i'm not going to to do that right now okay the premium version has something called uh plugins so there's a plugin that enables you to perform data visualization and it can draw pie charts and graphs and all of that okay just get your when you have your paid version go to plugins and you'll see one of the plugins that helps you to visualize your uh data okay um uh, Simon says, uh, finally, data can be utilized effectively on a $20 budget. Insane. Yes, it's insane, but most people that are not watching this broadcast, they don't know that this thing can be done. This is gold. If, those of you here that know how much data analysts are, are being paid, you guys will understand what I'm talking about. All right? Okay, so let's uh, go back to my screen. Let me go back to... <laughs> Catherine says... Um... <laughs> Uh, wait, I'm looking for Karima. Uh, oh, he says this feels illegal to know. <laughs> this is the real Ida, of course. But don't worry, you know, you are going to get the replay. The replay is going to be here for you. I mean, this is not night school, it's, it's um, Creator Lab. So you'll get the replay. But let's move on. And um, um, Catherine says data analysts can still do business analysis and other analysis that uses data oh of course of course okay it's uh, it's just huge all right let's go back into this into chat g uh because people are always saying chat gtp now it's now making me say the same thing uh so let, let me let me start pronouncing it well please uh let me go into chat gpt <laughs> let me go into chat gpt and do some other crazy things here okay so remember that at the beginning we asked chat gpt what Wait, let me um, make the screen bigger again. Okay. Um, Olushago, ah, I like the way you're thinking, Olushago. Olushago is giving a suggestion. It says, integrate GPT API into simple books. That is coming. That is coming. Olakunle and his team are working double time to make this the most watertight system. All right? Um, but in the meantime, we'll have to just do some crossovers. You know, all these things are still new. Uh, okay. So let me scroll back up to the top. And um, look at those things. Because at the beginning, I and if you want my prompts, just screenshot whatever you need. Okay, I'll wait a while for you guys to screenshot. Okay, so I asked it some questions. Remember, I said, uh, "Tell me what operations you can perform for me," and it gave me a list. Calculate the total revenue. Oops, stop that. The average transaction amount and so on and so forth. Customer segmentation. I like this. Okay. Now let's um let's say um, geographical okay we've done all these ones let's say this one it says segment customers based on their purchasing habits okay I'll just copy this I'll just copy this verbatim and just I'll change a few things here in the command and okay segments um. Customers based on the purchasing habits. Um, I'll say identify customers who often purchase high priced courses and uh, tabulate their data. Remember, I'm trying to batch multiple commands because of our limits. This is me, just I just, I just created this strategy um to adapt to the realities so i'm going to break this i'll say identify customers who often high price courses and tabulate the data for me also 
create a down no wait no no wait i'll i'll say this one later at the end that's the way i like talking to this guy so that he doesn't break my heart all right do that a lot of people just hide data and top the data for me uh then do the same with customers who purchase frequently okay i'm not finished though you, you your brain will bust today chat gpt your server will melt she'll be giving us limits i'll pack 1000 commands into one now you will die here okay then do the same with customers who purchase frequently um also create um separate excel separate downloadable i like spe specifying so i don't waste my prompts brother spell this thing well i'll be hungry hungry though they catch you also create downloadable Hmm. Let me do it differently. Create separate downloadable Excel spreadsheets for both segments. Um, let me see. For both categories. Um, remember to redact email and own information i hope you guys remember what redact uh what the word redact means to blur it out so that we don't run into trouble so hit um send hey, 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 hey. you will think today <laughs> you will think today <laughs> you will think to should we are charging me 20 dollars a month you will work for your money whoa you will work <laughs> She didn't no fear. <laughs> she didn't have it. I'm beginning to. I'm afraid I might lose my data analyst role soon. Don't worry. Don't be afraid to make you more efficient. The only way you will lose your data analyst role is if everybody starts watching my programs. Then what I do? <laughs> we have to bypass it. We are Nigerians. We're, Nigerians have gone through the worst restrictions all over the world. So if there's anybody who can imagine a way to bypass restrictions, that's to be us. We have suffered in this internet. Everything is always coming to us late. Stripe, we, they no agree. Paper, they no agree. Okay now. Okay now, I will leave it at that. <laughs> that okay now is open to interpretation. <laughs> okay. All right. See, he's doing his work. It's doing his work. It's doing his work. When when it finishes, I'll then see is to now give us the see it's giving us the downloadable. There we go. Download download links for everything. Now let's go. Let's look at what's happened here. I said uh, segment customers based on their purchasing habits. Identify customers who often purchase high priced courses and tabulate the data for me. Then do the same with customers who purchase frequently. Also create separate downloadable Excel spreadsheets for both categories. Remember to redact email and phone information so it doesn't show here. And did just that. It says, here's a snapshot of customers who often purchase high-priced courses. Adam Davis, Alan Salazar. And when I say snapshots, these are not all the customers. It just gives give like a snapshot, the first five records. It has many more. Okay? But it just gives a small snapshot to show you that it's working. Um, so here it shows, you know, total spend, number of transactions. Redacted email, phone number, the state. Okay. Then it goes on to say, here's a snapshot of customers who purchase frequently. And it showed me all of that. You can download the Excel spreadsheets containing these lists from the following links one and two. I am. Dudes, who have you seen teach you chat GPT like this in your life? <laughs> right? Uh, Ruth uh, says, I'm afraid companies might not want to employ data and business analysts after discovering this. And what happens to people who are just learning data analysis? My daughter, uh, sorry, I said my daughter. Sorry, you know, Vex. I mean, my dear. I want to say my dear. I don't know if I said my daughter. I guess, I guess it's old age that is catching up with me. I'm now sounding like an old man, right? Uh, but my dear, see, you, you don't need to be concerned about it. It's still new. Many companies do not know, all right? <laughs> Many companies do not know about this. And this is your chance to be at the cutting edge 
and um, and use this to scale up. It means that you'll be able to, to even attend to many more clients and customers because you have ChatGPT doing this for you at just $20 a month. I wish ChatGPT had uh, an affiliate program. I'd have been making money, but I'm just promoting them for free. All right. I love what Lucky Udeme is saying. He says, um, one would still need to learn the fundamentals of these skills, the terminology and other rudiments to use ChatGPT. To, pro to even prompt it properly, the fundamentals are needed. <laughs> oh my goodness. Do you know why I love this prompt? I'm sorry. Do you know why I love what he just said? Do you know why I love what he just said? It's making, me, it's making the evil side of me want to even come out more. All right? What's the evil side of me? <laughs> the evil side of me is that I'm going to show you how to even dismantle. I mean, I mean, I mean, Lucky Udeme, you are totally right. Oh, what you are saying is that what Lucky is saying is that you still need to learn the fundamentals of data analysis, and that is true. Only if you are not in, in John Obidi's class. <laughs> that is true. Only if you are not in John Obidi's class. If another person out there is teaching you, then yes. You have to collect the fundamentals and then da da da. But when you are in John Obidi's class, I will show you the anointing that breaks the yoke. So it all goes down to how to talk to ChatGPT. Watch this, all right? So, and again, Austin is saying the same thing. He's saying it will take a business analyst training to be able to prompt ChatGPT rightly. And I'm telling you, no, it depends on who is teaching you AI, all right? If you're the you AI, you do not need to. So let me let me stop boasting, even though I like to boast once in a while, so you all can recognize game. Let me show you exactly how this can be done. Okay. Uh, let me report. I say um, um, some people <laughs> in my <laughs> comments section are saying that I have to be. A data analyst in order to expertly analyze this data. I need to prove them wrong. Therefore, <laughs> tell me the Top ten um, um, operations that data that the best data analysts are paid for, and how you and how I can prompt you to do that for me the analysts in the world hey guys <laughs> did you guys see my prompt <laughs> okay let me hide the comment can you guys see the prompt <laughs> yeah kindness you are correct i said you are correct the only exception is those that are watching my class <laughs> that's what I'm saying. All of you, we all say the same thing. Everybody's correct. You're saying this video is not entirely able to replace data analysts. Not everyone can come up with a crazy prompt J.O. freestyles. A creative data analyst will top the list. And I'm now trying to tell you that only if you're not in this class that this will apply. So you are right for those that are not watching this class. When we are watching this class, this is what I, I'm just teaching you how to talk to it to get anything you want in this world. Okay? So read my prompt again. I'm going to move to read the prompt. I reported you people to chat GPT. I reported you guys to chat GPT. And I said, some people in my comment section are saying that I have to be a data analyst in order to expertly analyze this data. I need to prove them wrong ASAP. Therefore, tell me the top 10 operations that the best data analysts in the world are paid for. Data analysts and business intelligence analysts in the world are paid for and how i can prompt you to do that for me are you guys seeing i'm gonna hit enter come don't embarrass me i'm live on youtube just use your church mind and uh -huh. there we go 
Hey, oh, if I Rako, my goodness. <laughs> Are you guys seeing? Share TD. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> just be see, just be attending my classes. Just be, the ones that are free, I will give you some classes for free. Some of them will be paid. If you have money, up, upgrade, buy the paid classes. But the ones that are free, just come and sit down, get your chilled mouth, and watch Ifa Oracle. No fear. <laughs> Don't let it be showing you. I have to zoom in some more because I don't know if you guys can see these things clearly. It's still generating. All right. There we go. Oh, yeah. Let's go to what they just told us. First of all, look at my process. Some people in my comment section are saying I have to be the analyst. In order to expertly analyze the data, I need to prove them wrong. Please, therefore, uh, tell me the top 10 operations that the best data analysts and best data analysts in the world are paid for and how I can prompt you to do them for me. It tells me, data analysts and business intelligence analysts are highly valued in the business world for their ability to turn raw data into actionable insights. Um, the, they leverage a variety of methods to interpret data, analyze results, and create reports, which can then inform strategic business decisions. Here are top 10 top operations that these professionals are often paid for, along with examples of how you could instruct me, an AI model, <laughs> to perform these tasks. <laughs> you guys see this? <laughs> That's what I must get the data of this analysis after this class. It's so easy now. <laughs> I don't feel like I'm doing any work here. I just feel like I'm having fun. And you, guys are, you guys are watching me. And you guys are watching me have fun. Right? Um... Let me see. All right. So it says one, descriptive analysis, right? Um, descriptive analysis. My children, my children should just, they, my, my children should just um, create a statue in my house and be saluting it every day if I'm not around. I'm telling you. I can't just come to this world I'll be getting my brilliance for free. Anyway, um, descriptive analysis. <laughs> this involves understanding and summarizing the main characteristics of a data set such as the mean, can you see all these things? Such as the mean, median, and distribution of various factors. And see, guys, listen, listen. This is how you can become the most educated person on the face of the earth, even if you did not study this thing. All right? This, so listen, so now some of you that may not have studied statistics, you may not understand what mean, median, and distribution of this thing. Do you understand? Just say, please explain what you mean by the mean, median, and distribution of various features. It will explain. Just tell it, anything you are not clear about. Ask Chat GPT. No fear. Is your boy? Is your employee? Okay. Is that you could ask me to provide a descriptive analysis of your data, of your data by saying, provide. Says, give me the prompt. Says, provide a descriptive analysis of my data. All right. Diagnostic analysis. This involves drilling down into the data. To understand the root cause of a particular outcome, you could ask me, why did sales drop last quarter? Right? You guys see this? Predictive analysis. This is very important. Predictive. It says, this involves using statistical models and forecasting techniques to understand future outcomes. You could say, predict next quarter's sales based on historical data. You know, I told you guys that when I'm marketing a class to you, I do not hype anything. I don't exaggerate. I told you guys that you'll be able to predict future outcomes on this class. Did I, did I not tell you? Here it is. It's giving you the prompt. All right? If you want to take a screenshot, do so. But don't worry. I, like I said, the replay is here. You can watch it as many times as you like. You can download it. Do what you like with it. It's all yours. All right? Uh, prescriptive analysis. See? This involves optimization and simulation algorithms to advise on possible outcomes. You could ask, what should we do to increase sales next quarter? You see this? Data cleaning. This involves identifying and correcting errors in the data set. You could ask, clean my data and remove any errors. Data visualization. This involves, uh, somebody was in the comments asking about this part. You really want to... To, to, to sack somebody in your office. I saw somebody in the comment section asking about this visualization. 
<laughs> she was, you either want to sack somebody or you want to take somebody's job. But that's okay. You are in my class. It's allowed. Chancing is allowed. I mean, no, not chancing. Overtaking is allowed. <laughs> this involves creating charts, graphs, and other visual representations of data to help stakeholders understand trends and patterns. You could ask, create a bar chart showing sales by product category. Now, customer segmentation. This involves dividing a business's customers into groups that share similar characteristics. You could say, segment my customers based on their purchasing habits. A-B testing. All right? This involves comparing two versions of a web page, email, or other business assets to, to determine which performs better. You would ask, analyze the results of my A-B test. All right? Churn prediction and analysis. This involves identifying which customers are likely to stop doing business with a company. And it says in brackets, in, you know, churn. It's, it's teaching you what churn means. And understanding why. You could ask, predict which customers are likely to churn that is stop doing business with us next quarter so that we can show up as Ujuju Calabar on their doorstep and say, why are you trying to stop doing business with us? What did we do to you? Do you want to go to Hairfire, my brother, my sister? You better come back and renew your subscription, all right? 10, sentiment analysis. This involves using natural language processing to understand customer sentiment towards a brand or product based on reviews on social media or social media data. You could ask, analyze sentiment in my customer reviews. Remember, while I can perform many of these operations, the complexity of certain tasks like descriptive and sentiment analysis might require more specialized tools or data than we currently have available. Also, the quality and reliability of the analysis are largely dependent on the quality and completeness of the data required. Don't let this scare you. It has given you ways out in everything that said. It says that for this to be qualitative and reliable, you have to make sure that the data you are uploading has is of great quality and is also complete. All right? This one, it says that the complexity, yada, 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 might require specialized tools. Don't worry. Chat GPT has all the specialized tools, but sometimes Chat GPT does not know it has them is depending on you, its boss, its CEO, to push it to its limit, all right? So this kind of prompting will make you get everything that you should, all right, out of chat GPT, okay? Let me see what Martin is saying. So I just started in tech, learning data anal analytics last week. But with this, I'm applying for my first data analytics role this night. Ah, well, my brother, I don't know if you can do that. Ciao. Uh -huh, because I'm, I'm, a, I'm, the, I'm the scientist here. It's my job to um, do these experiments and explain it to you. But I have never worked as a, an analyst before. I don't, it's not my line of work. I don't care to be that. Um, so, you know, if, if, if all I'm showing you can help you apply, then by all means, go ahead. But hold on. One thing I would, I would advise you, Martin, if you are doing this for real, most people do not just take your word for it that you are skillful. They would need you to have a certification. Okay? So if you want to really get a job with this, it would be advisable to get a proper certification. Most companies would need a certification that you can do it. Once you are certified, you can start, you can then get employed and be using ChatGPT to do your work. All right? So um that's that emmanuel says how do i buy this subscription i'm living in europe that just go to your account settings somewhere there's a link for you to upgrade and you can pay with your card since you're living in europe all right uh let me see okay thank you panthera for starring questions let me see which ones i have missed so just to be sure jo i have i missed it or you've spoken about the dali created by no, no, no. I'm not talking about DALI today. That, I, I did that on um, AI Weekend. Okay, This is about data analysis. Uh, Esther says, uh, but what happens if your business deals with sensitive clients' information? Will that not expose this information when you upload it to chat GPT, especially when they use such to train their models? Well, yes, it will. But it's like saying up, that uploading your customer data to Google Drive now will expose it. All our data is already exposed. Okay, but we are just taking them up on their promise of encryption. If your data is on uh, is on Google Drive or Google Spreadsheets, Google has your data now. Uh -huh. So what are you going to, what, going to do about that? So if Google has your data, ChatGPT having your data is all the same thing. So I don't think that should be that much of a concern. 
Like, let's see what James uh, asked. What are the ethical considerations when using sensitive company data on chat GPT? Are there missteps that could have negative implications? And not to my knowledge at this time. I think there's a similar um, line of thought that Esther had earlier. Lawal Modukweola says, can it also be used in documenting paychecks for salaried workers? Uh, paychecks. That, that would be simple books, not chat GPT. That would be simple books, okay? So, um, like we said before, if you've not yet received your invite to or your onboarding to chat to um, sorry to Simple Books, uh, and if you're just coming now, you will know what Simple Books is. So please watch your, watch your replay. Um, if, so if you've not gotten your onboarding, send an email to hello at simplebooks.com. Let them know that you, you watched this webinar with John Obidi and Ola Kunle, and you would like to get onboarded, and they are going to onboard you um, in a in a jiffy. Did I answer James's question? Said, does this pose a threat to talents currently learning data analytics and data science. What is the way forward for them? Listen, guys, listen. In my experience in this path, no matter how much you think you know up here, companies still require some form of certification. Okay? So you know data analysis. They'll ask you, so where were you trained? You say where you were trained, but okay, what is the proof? What is the certification? So you still need to be certified, all right? So those of you who are currently learning data analytics and data science, finish it. It's going to be useful. And to be honest, I mean, I mean, aside all my all the razzmatazz I showed you here, knowledge of data analytics and data science will make you better in this evolving world of AI it will make you way better than an average chat GPT user. I'm only doing this for those who don't have time to be learning data science. Those who don't really think of it as their core path, okay? But they want to still be able to use it in their businesses or as a value-added solution to their existing customers. Usually, customers, that, that, and that's the thing about being an entrepreneur, customers don't ask for your certificates. Uh -huh. Most of you are social media managers. You are this. Customers don't ask you for your certificates. It's companies that you seek employment to that ask for your certification. So if you're an entrepreneur offering this to your customers or your clients as a service or whatever, nobody will ask for your certification. All they will ask is your proof of work, proof that you can do it. And proof that you can do it usually comes in form of testimonials. What testimonial? What who have you done this for before? What testimonials do you have? Reviews. Or you can provide a, a sales video. Okay? You guys should attend my future classes. I'll teach you how to make easy sales videos and, you know, to sell your products and services better to the public, okay? You can make a simple screen recording saying, okay, look at this, cost, look at this company's data. Just create dummy data, okay? Like you saw me do with ChatGPT, all right? Look at, look at this company's data. Look at how we are going to... Uh, look at how we we analyzed using our proprietary business intelligence systems. We're able to analyze this data and predict the future trend of the company and advise their marketing efforts like this, like this, like this. You don't they don't have to know what the system is. The system is Chat GPTO. Or you can say our team. Our team came together to analyze the data. Our Harvard trained, don't add Harvard trained, I'm just being dramatic, all right? Our team came together to analyze the data. You know, the, we, we rigorously analyzed the data and were able to project this bar chart and this pie chart and these trends. And we're able to show the upward trajectory of this company's business. We're able to identify their customers that were likely to churn. We just learned the, what the meaning of churn was. No, no, no. But we use the word as if. I think we've always known. Even Nigeria now, it's supposed to know as in B. Eh? Where did they carry last? Yeah, we, we were able to predict their churn and we're able to advise on how to largely limit the churn. All right. We're able to show them where to predictably focus future marketing efforts. And when they followed our advice, this was how much more percentage their revenue, their revenue grew by. We are in the business of making great no we are in the business of making good companies great click the button below to sign up now hey
Shame, oh, I'm going to cut out this part from the replay. You can't be having my sales pitch for free. Amen? You came here to a lending analysis, not sales. If you want sales, you come to my paid training. Come to my paid training. So that sample pitch I just gave you now, some people are just holding. They're like, ah, this one, they don't die. Monday morning, I'm finishing the marketplace with this. <laughs> all right? Anyway, that's about that. All right? So I'm, not, I'm just advising you on how best to apply this, okay? I don't think it's advisable to um, put out yourself as a data analyst when you don't, when you don't have a certificate if you're applying for a job. Uh, but if you're doing it as an entrepreneur, then by all means, yes. All right? By all means, yes. I would, I would advise everybody here, you know, to get your account with simple books. Please, $20 is not a, is not a lot. I'm not getting one naira by urging you to get a chat GPT plus subscription. Get it. It is a, it's an investment that will pay you over and over again. I can't stress it enough. Get chat GPT plus. Leave that free version. It's for normal people. For extraordinary people like us, we need the plus version. When you're in the plus version, you can start practicing. Start practicing. It's going to even blow your mind um, all the more. And in future classes as well, I'll be showing you how you can do even more mad stuff. This feature called um, uh, chat, uh, uh, Code Interpreter is just a recent feature that came out and nobody's really using it well. I've looked at YouTube. I've looked at TikTok. I've looked at Instagram. And everybody that is teaching people how to use it, they are just beating around the bush. This is how to use it. And uh, uh, much data will show you how to even dive more. And as more features come out, I will also um, organize more trainings to equip you guys on how exactly to use those features for your business ends. Okay? Um, let me see. All right, guys. I've, I've covered the, the long and short of this. Your action points right now are to go and get um, registered. Go and get registered on Simple Books. If you registered for this training on that page, your name and your email, um, your email address and your phone number, uh, they have been received by Simple Books. But Simple Books has been onboarding everyone in batches. So some of you have already gotten access. Some of you have not yet gotten access. But um, Olakunle has assured me that everybody will eventually be onboarded. But if you wish to expedite it, if you wish to speed it up um, for some reason, or you think that maybe they, they, may ha they may have skipped your name on the list, send an email to the email address there. It's hello at simplebooks.com. Uh, Please put the email for Simple Books on the screen right there um there we go so if for any reason you think that simple books may have skipped you or something or maybe you entered the wrong email by mistake something like that uh just send an email to hello at simplebooks.com uh, so look at the spelling of simple books please somebody is still going to type b double o k s that is how it's spelled here b k s okay send an email tell them that hey i was on the webinar with John Obidia and Olakunle, but um, I haven't been onboarded yet. Could you please um, facilitate this or something? And somebody is going to onboard you um, really quickly, okay? Um, um, I saw something else. Um, Chiroma says, uh, please, how does one enroll in night school? Okay, uh, this YouTube channel is called Creator Lab, okay? On um, Creator Lab, we only talk about online marketing especially with AI. That's all we do on this channel. But on my other channel, my Jonobiri channel, I, that's where I am mostly known for my teachings on philosophy, um, life lessons, um, and personal development. <clears throat> okay, that's a separate channel. To enroll in those classes, there's a separate link. Um, well, first thing you should do is just go to this URL, hsa.to slash letters. You'll be enrolled, you'll subscribe to my other mailing list called the Wisdom Letters. And I send people on that list um, links to my um, live sessions on life skills, personal development, and um, philosophy, critical thinking, and so on. So if you're, if you're interested in that, that's the separate brand, and you can sign up to that separately. But right here where we are, this is uh, Creator Lab. And all we talk about here is online marketing, especially using AI. How many of you guys have been blessed today? All right. If you've been blessed today, give the Lord a wipe up. 
give the Lord a white pot. Oh, Ulf Milola says, I wasn't sure why I got that email. Yes, that's why I got the email, okay? This uh, webinar was done in partnership with Simple Books. It would not make sense to show you the AI part of it without giving you a solution. We used to have a solution before, Wave Apps, but Wave Apps just, you know, they, they served all of us breakfast. They don't want to serve anybody outside the U.S. anymore. And thankfully, Olakunle has created a, a system that is just as good, if not better than Wave Apps, serving the Nigerian market, the African market, and beyond is all-inclusive. So we had a, a partnership whereby everyone who came on here to learn this could get free access to their fantastic software. So the first part of this, maybe just came now or recently, the first part of this broadcast was um, Ola Kunle, um talking to us about how to keep records in our business. And he did a short demo of Simple Books, um, the software that everyone here is going to get. Okay, so before we sign out, uh, where is, um, is Ola Kunle still around? Maybe Ola Kunle can just come and show his face, uh, and, you know, uh, so uh, those who came late can place a face to the name and and we can say our our goodbyes. Okay, I don't think Olakunle is, uh, is available now. But uh, anyway, just watch the replay. you see um, okay, Olakunle is here. Okay, let me bring him on. Yes, sir. So this is the, <laughs> the end of the session. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much, uh, John. And I, I'm sure everyone has been, this has been, a, been an insightful uh, and impactful session. Yes, I'm checking the comments now. Yes, yes. I just like I thought, even I myself, really, really well done, uh, John, uh, for the breakdown of the analysis. And remember, you can only analyze when you have the data. And yeah. Simple Books is the right place for keeping your record, keeping your data. So, Importantly, uh, we've sent invites. We've gotten a couple of emails uh, for those who didn't get that. Please give us to tomorrow. We would all send, be sent to everyone who didn't get. Um, even those that get, we'll send follow-up in case you missed it um, to you. But more importantly, is you don't just get the email. You activate your account and you start recording your transactions immediately. If you have past data, this is a good time to pull in all those data in. You can use uh, CSV to pull all your past data. So you don't have to start recording one by one. And then going forward, start recording your data one by one. The platform, even though it's web-based right now, is optimized for mobile. So you just go to your browser, your um, either your Chrome or your... Um, remind me now, John, iOS uh, browser. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Safari. Safari, exactly. Or your Safari, yeah. just open up www.simplebreakers.com and you can start using or click on the link um, that we're going to be sending to you uh, or that we've sent to you. Start recording your transactions. That is the first basis. There is no analysis without the data. The, mm -hmm. the beautiful things that you've seen from John today, it's only possible because there was a data, all right? So getting the data, get it into the platform, sales, expenses, uh, anything that brings you money, anything that takes money out of your business, issue your invoices, and you can get analysis directly. And like John also mentioned, um, we're already looking at how we can integrate with just ChatGPT so that you can get all these data directly from Simple Books without even uh, having to uh, subscribe to uh, this thing. Amazing. Um, yeah, so, but you need to be on Simple Books and you need to start keeping your data today. Don't procrastinate it tomorrow, start today. All, all right. right. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you so much, Alakole. It's such a pleasure having you. Um, we'll see you on the flip side. Definitely. All right, guys. All right. All right, guys. Um, as I said before, this is, uh, this has been recorded. It's going to be available right here on the channel. You can watch it as many times as you like. Uh, we're also going to send the link to the relay to those of you that uh, registered for this so that I can have it um, there for easy access. And as promised, Olakoli says, uh, because a lot of people really registered and put in their names, most of them could not be here to watch live, so they will watch the replay. But we had a lot of those people um, filling in the forms, and he said, please give him till tomorrow. Everyone will be onboarded. Many people have been onboarded already. We had thousands of people indicating interest, and um, we are going to get to every single one. Okay, if you want to invite people also to... Um, try out simple books and also to um, watch this training. Just send them the link 
uh, to register so they can get the onboarding emails and the replays and everything. Okay, the link you want to share share to your people. Um, the link to share with your friends is um, let me find the link. It's um, uh, no no to share the webinar is what I mean. Uh, it's a uh, creator lab dot media slash f b m see uh, so if you want to share this with someone you know to register for this whole thing and they will also get access to simple books just give them this link creator lab dot me slash f b m share it to anyone and once they register you know simple books will see their details and onboard them they will also get access to this uh to this training and um and, and subsequent emails that will be sent to everyone getting this training, all right? Also, this is not all, you know, again, Creator Lab serves to educate you on everything that would empower you to make money in the creator economy, all right? You being subscribed to this email list and this platform is going to set you apart from 99% of everybody else doing internet marketing, okay? You know that I don't make any wild uh, estimations. That is going to be what you're going to get on this channel, on this platform, on this email list. So look out to future uh, webinars and trainings we're going to be holding. We're going to be teaching you how to make more money even as an online marketer, as an affiliate marketer. Like, the sky is not even the limit. Today was on data analysis, and I'm glad you guys learned something. I will see you later. If you have any questions for the Simple Books people, send them an email. And... Um, yeah, look forward to other broadcasts. Make sure you are on our Telegram channel. Uh, that way you'll get the alerts to what we're doing a lot faster. All right, guys. Uh, that said, goodbye, everyone. Um, thank you, Innocent, Onarieta, um, Olushego. Olushego says, can it be used to track personal income and expenses? Yes, it can. Okay. EJK says, I have been onboarded and I created an account with simple books fantastic uh, educate says thank you for this awesome session thank you guys for being here um i will talk to you later bye bye now